is Storm and Ruby. Ruby's a shire mare on the inside here. And come over here. Come over, darling. Storm is Irish draft cross. I'm not sure how he, you know, what the cross is, but he favours strongly the Irish draft. So they're both for similar height. Because of the cam on the road, they look pretty level, but the Shire horse is two inches taller. Um, so 17 two and 17 hands. But these are here for ride and drive. So what we do is we drive them open bridle, see? And well, they've both got the wendering bits in that we use now. They're absolutely unbelievable. Um, seriously, magic they are, magic bits. Most, well, all the horses we've had through in a year, I've really taken to them, loved them. You know, uh, and there's, um, well, you go on their website and tell you all about them, but wendering bits, yeah, they're really good. So for us, you know, we've always driven in, in soft rubber. And now I've, I've tried to produce some of my own. I spent a great deal of money. I'm not talking, I mean, tens of thousands of pounds. And the moulds that you need are just so expensive. I mean, really massively expensive. I mean, if you're making 100,000 of them, 200, 300,000, or, you know, like a lot of injection moulding will be literally in the millions so that comes down to pennies then but it's making the actual tool in the first place to form the shape but they uh, gave these bits to a dog to chew and they couldn't make them we've had one that's one in a year that's got slightly marked and that's only due to the fact the free molar on the horse had been chipped or broken sometime in the past and um, left a bit of a rough edge on it. Anyway, getting back to these, they're going to be ride and drive. The thing I find quite fascinating is you look at, you know, the length of their legs and yet they travel together so well. They don't really do much communication. So what I mean by that is you put whichever one you put two on the pole first, the other one doesn't come out, they don't call for each other, they don't, you know, <laughs> you know, where are you been? Like, anything like that, nothing. Um, they don't touch one another when you, you know, if you stop. So often all wants a little bit of reassurance or comfort or wants to know if he's, you know, he already knows he's not the dominant one. He'll probably you know, go and touch the other one if you can. Not encroach in his space exactly, because they wouldn't, obviously wouldn't want to do that, but they want to just actually make physical contact. I suppose it's the same as us putting a hand on someone's shoulder. Oh. So, but they're going along lovely together. You know, you couldn't believe it really. Two entirely different. And you've got, you know, to, obviously it takes a, you know, without being conceited in any way, it takes a little bit of skill to get them to balance together. But they go along and they're so happy together working. But they're independent. They're not clingy at all. They're independent. Just, you know, you learn something all the time. I've had this happen before, and this horse here, the gun horse, He's always got his ears back on me when I'm talking, yeah? The Shire, don't really care what I've got to say at all. He is always forward, or 90% of the time, yeah. It's a generalisation, eh? So they're going really well together, I'm very pleased with them. The other reason we do this is these are only going to be driven single at home, they're not pair horses at all. I think the Shire might be one day. I think they bought another youngster to, you know, come on in the future to make a pair. But it's just, just to show you. You see here, look, the f just dropping out the horse's mouth, the little white dots. Um, you know, 
know when they love these bits. They love to just suck them away. It's a bit like I'm a firm believer. We never drive anything. If you look at any films on on YouTube, I think there's I don't know. There's a lot of films on there anyway. Maybe a thousand films. I don't know. There might be a thousand different horses on it. Um, and you'll see that we never drive. With very, very rare exceptions, you'll see them in a different bit. But that's only because the, the clients requested that. But they've all been started in rubber. And, like, we've done one for a young lady who'd had a operation on both her arms. You know, she had something wrong with her. And she doesn't want to stop driving. Well, she has no strength in her arms at all. So... What I, the pressure, pressure, I'm not going to apply any pressure at all, any pressure at all on my range, you know, if I can get a decent head carriage, um, with just a gentle contact, that's lovely, and I want a general, general contact for all transitions, so if they're cantering or whatever, I still want the same soft contact, come over, so, the reason we put them together as well is close proximity to another horse. So if these horses go out in company, they're both going to be ridden. So they go out in company with a strange horse. You know, they'll let it walk alongside them because they're used to having a horse there. You see what I mean? Um, the other thing you can do with them, which, you know, people would perhaps... I mean, you've got to remember these are babies. They've only been with us, I don't know what it is now, about five weeks. Um, I've got another, because they ride and drive, it's normally six weeks we get them all done and finished in. So when I put this horse over here and you've got all this rubbing up his belly, look, you know, right in tight to it. Although it's open bridle, I'll put his head through there, can you see, look? You know, and it just does it for me. And the same with this one, we bring him over here. He's head right in the, in the hedge there, can you see? And all rubbing down his body and he's happy. So that's another nice thing because often when you ride out with and the horse tries to move away, you know, to the curb side, and then you get a situation, come up, good boy, hello there. You get a situation where they feel crowded so they won't go in the hedge and then they get up tight. You can get a little bit kicky bucky maybe, but it's nice just to be able to do that, you know, like put this horse's head right around, come over, come over and put it right through them, there, yeah, we're going up the bank a bit now, and all that running around its legs, can you see, so that's good, and the same with our chap here, he's just zappy, and the mayor and gelding working together, when you look back in time, I've seen some real old, I saw a 1780, I think it was, um, stables up in the Cotswolds a while ago, and where they had the coaching horses, all of those was in stalls, and they all had a drain hole directly under where the horse would, uh, stall, you know, where he, where the horse would pee, in other words, you know, so he'd pee straight down the drain in the centre of the stall, the tie stall, um, so obviously for geldings. you know, for driving. Like, I've, we've had some, on a couple of, couple of videos, we've had some where, quite remarkable, really, you've got to um, put the bridging on and the trooper, and the mayor just, overall start, in some way, react to it as though it was a stallion want to cover her, you know? So, yeah. That's lovely. Good, baby. I'll just tell them, well, see that horse here just stopped and skid. And the other thing I want to show you, oh, walk up, walk up, trot. I'm going to show you something else now which you need to do. It's, I wouldn't recommend, uh, when I say you need to do, we do, it's how we do it. That doesn't make you know, I'm not telling you to do what we do because we've all 
due respect to anybody else. You know, I'm getting on the years now, and all I've done is all she's...